rev up the chainsaws, because today we're talking about the melee foot troops of the Space Marines. Let's talk about what the Assault Intercessors can do in Warhammer 40k 10th. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about a unit that I suspect that quite a lot of Space Marine players have in droves, the Power Armoured Melee Battle Line that are the Assault Intercessors squad. In the video we'll talk briefly about their models, then go on to their data sheets and how I think about fielding them in game, I then move on to a few obvious combos and synergies, and quite how they stack up against their rivals. When they came out, the Assault Intercessors really did change up what a Space Marine troop's choice could be. Aside from certain dedicated melee chapters out there, typically Space Marine troops tended to be ones that had bolt guns or something similar, generally being deployed with things that are a lot more range focused, perhaps due to the classic Space Marine chapter organisation, with tactical squads and assault squads filling the roles that they did in a battle company. Now though, it seems to be equally acceptable for Primaris Space Marines to fill themselves with bolt pistols and chainsaws when they're expecting to be getting up close and personal with the enemy, and it does feel very appropriate for certain chapters, maybe Blood Angels in particular. As they go, I'd say that they're simple and effective miniatures, released at the start of 9th edition, both with a monopose and then a multi-part kit. Maybe not enormously exciting or different compared with standard Space Marines in power armour, though I think as your standard troops choice you wouldn't really want them to be doing anything too weird with them, and at least I'd say that they're fairly dynamic models, and have a few interesting head swaps and aesthetic upgrades that you can give them, plus a choice of war gear for the sergeant with some fancy pistols and power weapons. Currently the miniature kit from them for Games Workshop is £37.50, €50, Euros, or $60 for 10 of them, Maybe not too awful for the amount of plastic and points that you get on the table for that, at least compared with a lot of the Games Workshop's other offerings, though I definitely bear in mind that you might well be able to find these out in the wild a fair bit cheaper than Games Workshop stock prices, they were discounted really quite a lot during 9th edition in the Indomitus set and then the starter sets, and also in the Imperium magazine as well. There's at least a reasonable chance if you look on eBay you might find some of the more monopose brews going for quite a lot less than these guys do. If you were looking to pick up the full fat multi-part kit though, then there's various different places that stock them cheaper than Games Workshop. Element Games in the UK, Gap Games in Australia and Fenris Workshop in Canada all have them at a discount. They're all linked in the video description, and as always any purchases made through those links go to help support All Specs Tactics, so a massive thank you to any of you guys out there who use them. So that's the miniatures, so let's see what these chainsaw wielding Astartes can do in game then. Currently in the Space Marine rules, the Assault Intercessor Squad is 80 points per 5 of them, or 160 per 10. A fairly standard Space Marine stat line with 2 wounds at toughness 4 and a 3 plus armor save. And much like the standard or heavy Intercessors, they get Objective Control 2 as one of their unique things, so they're going to have a lot more weight to scoring points if they can get themselves on an objective and not get wiped out by the enemy. Otherwise, fairly standard keywords, they have the Grenades and the Tacticus keyword, which allows a stratagem and characters to attach. I'd say the Battle Line keyword maybe doesn't add too much for them though, unless you just wanted to field these guys massively en masse for fluff reasons. As ever with Space Marine troops choices, if you're taking them it often makes more sense to field them in smaller numbers. They've got some good utility and it's kind of handy to have cheap units in the game, though in general they're just not quite as efficient or scary enough to be your main line damage dealers not unless you know you're fighting against light infantry and little else. Talking of their damage output though, they both have some fun pistols and then their close combat attacks. Their standard pistols are the heavy bolt pistols, an 18 inch range single shot at strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 1, so a little bit more savage than your standard small arms there. It is quite nice to have the option to reach out and take a few shots at something a bit further away. Otherwise for the sergeant, he's got the option to swap out that heavy bolt pistol for either a plasma pistol or a hand flamer. Out of the two, I think I'd be a bit more tempted by the plasma pistol myself. I feel like what the squad really needs is a little bit more threat against heavier units, like being able to threaten to one-shot enemy space marines, as opposed to yet more attacks to deal with light stuff, which they're already pretty effective against. Melee is their main deal, of course. Each assault intercessor in combat gets four attacks at strength four, AP minus one, and damage one and their Shock Assault special rule allows them some wound rerolls. They always get to reroll a wound roll of 1, so just hit a little bit harder than you might expect there. But if they make any melee attacks against an enemy unit on an objective, then they get to actually fully reroll the wound rolls, which is pretty handy for allowing those Strength 4 attacks to punch up a little bit against things they might wound on a 5+. plus. In general though, their damage profile is going to be a lot better against things with Toughness 3 and Toughness 4 with mid to poor saves. That's certainly going to be their primary target. Besides that though, the sergeant gets a power weapon of some sort, 
either a standard power weapon with 4 attacks at strength 5 AP 2, or a power fist or thunder hammer, each with 3 attacks and strength 8 and damage 2. The thunder hammer has devastating wounds, but only hits on a 4, the power fist doesn't, but it hits on a 3. Between those two, I'd generally rate the power fist as the stronger one. I think it was a bit more close when devastating wounds were mortal wounds, now they aren't though, I feel like the power fist is just the more well-rounded, though in reality there isn't really all that much in it. Putting that all together, here's just a rough idea of what you might expect for the melee damage output for a squad of 5 of them. This is just their combat, so it discounts any pistol shots they might have had, and it gets you 5 assault intercessors with a power fist on the sergeant. It expects to slay around about 8 or 9 termagants, slightly more on an objective marker, 2 or 3 standard issue space marines like them, 2 wounds to terminators going up to 1 full terminator on an objective, or around about 2 or 3 wounds to enemy vehicles with a 3 plus save. Basically, in general, their damage output is kind of good for killing Space Marines or Termigants, but nothing really particularly heavier than that. And if you are fielding them in squads of five, they can't really be too reliable in charging enemy heavy hitters. If they charge into a Terminator squad, they might inflict a bit of damage, then just all die on the swing back, and they won't be threatening vehicles very much. Overall, for their unit role, I think that leaves them as cheap power armoured wounds to put on objective markers. Really not too bad a defensive profile for the cost, with some fairly sturdy 3 plus saves and toughness 4, and enough melee that should easily delete a squad of enemy objective holders, or really quite seriously threaten some similar power armoured miniatures, but not really enough to be tangling with the enemy elites. It certainly seems like their intended design is to have them as a threat that can move forward to midfield objectives and skirmish with the enemy when they fight against them. I feel like Games Workshop did that in quite a clever way with their objective control 2 and the 4 reroll wounds against things on points. It's definitely possible to build big squads of them, but in general competitively they tend to be used in squads of 5 men and not really going all in on them. I think it is kind of interesting that with a lot of the Space Marine troops they have some of the widest and best access to buffs, characters, transports and synergy options, but just rarely seem to be the unit that you'd really choose to do that in a world where you had equal access to all options. As ever, if you've got a unit that's just maybe a little bit lacklustre on the damage side of things, you certainly could invest loads in making them a bit more threatening. But usually if you're doing that, it might make more sense to do so with some scary Space Marine melee elites, maybe things like Aggressors or Blade Guard, as opposed to trying to make these guys be your damage workhorse. If you're starting from a fairly scary point to begin with, then you're probably going to have things go a bit further. In any case though, running through their buffs, there are quite a lot of options. Both the moment could allow them re-roll hits, which means that you could be re-rolling hits and wounds against enemies on objectives, or definitely stack a bunch of saves. For more generic stratagems, Armour of Contempt could well be worth it if it's the thing that allows them to cling to life on an objective. Maybe stratagems aren't going to be super exciting on a small unit though, unless you've either invested big and depending on what rivals you've got for the use. I think the grenade genuinely could be alright, depending on what situation they're in. If they're just in a situation where they're needing to skirmish with something they can't quite handle, that could be enough damage to tip the balance. Averaging three mortal wounds could mean that you maybe kill one terminator and they can charge and kill another. That might be enough to win the fight in a depleted squad. For transports, they do have quite a lot of options. You could deliver them with a cheap impulsor, a repulsor or a land raider. In general though, it just feels a bit weird buying in a transport that costs significantly more than the actual cost of the squad that it's transporting. It just really seems to be a good idea to do that. Out of the transports, the one that I'd be most tempted by would probably be a cheap impulsor. That's 80 points, and there 80 points. You could maybe pile a unit of 5 of them in with an attached character if it made sense, though I feel that might be more trying to do it for the character than the squad. I feel like if you're spending the premium to get yourself a Repulsor or a Lamb Raider, you're probably better off putting some serious elites in it. A Lamb Raider definitely could deliver a squad of these to close combat, but it does just feel like you're paying a massive premium for delivering a unit that can only handle certain targets, as opposed to something that's very general purpose and will happily smack down vehicles. It's kind of the same for characters, definitely something that you could do but maybe a touch suboptimal. In general not really going to be good to buff 5 man objective controlling squads, but if you wanted to make them try and work as your more primary damage dealers then a 10 man squad could be okay. I think they do have really quite a lot of viable options, captains add free stratagems and actually add some good melee threat, lieutenants add lethal hits to allow them to punch up a bit, maybe a bit of anti-synergy with their reroll wound rolls there though. The chaplain's plus 1 to wound means that you could be, say, even wounding vehicles on a 5 plus with chainswords and re-rolling things. That might help tip the balance against tougher targets a bit. 
Librarian's add a bit of threat and a 4 plus and vulnerable save, and Tigerius could be okay given his limited attachment options maybe. And the Judas here could allow fights first, but I feel like he's probably better with something like Blade Guard that's a little bit more general purpose. I feel like the damage output of the Assault Intercessors might not quite be enough to really deter charges by big scary enemy things that might just be able to shrug off that kind of damage. Overall I'd say there's multiple things that are fine, but I feel like for a lot of these you might be looking at the Assault Intercessors and just say why don't they just leave Blade Guard instead. You're probably going to get a bit more value out of them with Strength 5, AP 2 and Damage 2 attacks than you are with a bunch of Strength 4, Damage 1. For more casual and less hyper-optimised games though, I think they'd certainly work fine. There's probably just about enough melee between one of these characters, particularly a buffing one, and a full squad of 10 of them to handle the majority of targets, even if they might be a little bit less lethal than some other stuff. Otherwise, for detachments, I feel like they make good enough use of a bunch of rules, maybe nothing that's enormously standout detachment-wise. I'd say perhaps the things that allow them advance and charge are some of the best, like the Gladius or the Stormlance. I feel like that's really quite nice for a slow unit that ideally wants to be in melee, really helps add to their threat range. Otherwise, the rest seem like they're sort of marginal gains. The Iron Storm could be handy to re-roll a single hit or wound on, say, a Power Fist or Thunder Hammer for the Sergeant. Not bad for a Plasma Pistol either. Vanguard Spearhead could give them a bit more toughness at range, which isn't bad for objective takers of any sort. He could return them to reserves if it made sense, though I feel like you're more likely to want to do that on ranged damage dealers or Phobos stuff. And the Firestorm Assault Force maybe doesn't add loads, I guess you could advance and shoot if that matters, but the plus one to wound could genuinely be fairly fearsome for allowing them to punch up a bit better, particularly if they can get the re-roll wound rolls as well. Otherwise, I feel like they're at least interesting in the context of the other chapters. Blood Angels do make the unit hit genuinely a lot harder, they get plus one attack and plus one strength on the charge and Sons of Sanguinius. Strength five and five attacks per model I think is genuinely enough to be really quite threatening. And I feel like if you want some objective claiming guys, they have genuinely a bit more draw compared with standard intercessors here. They are competing with even more melee options here though in their jump units, plus death company intercessors at 85 points which you could run them as with re-rolling hits and feel no pain type saves in place of the wound roll thing. Another thing that makes them a bit more interesting in Blood Angels is Mephiston if you want to field him. He seems to have his best home with assault intercessors these days seeing as he still can't join Blade Guard yet. So I guess if you want to make good use of him, then a big unit of these guys might be your best option. Otherwise, Death Watch can help out with some damage boosts, and they can be part of the Fortis kill team, though it doesn't really make sense when you're passing up Hell Blasters for that. Black Templars will get them a 6 plus feel no pain, and plenty of melee boosts. Here they're competing against the very cheap Primaris Crusader squad at 14 points per model though. I feel like if you want 10 man units, then that's pretty much flat superior. You could add to the Power Armoured Horde in more smaller units though, if you like to. For Dark Angels, their Unforgiven Task Force could give you some Battleshock Resilience, which I guess could be worse on objective takers, and they're probably the best choice for Ezekiel and Asmodai to join now that they can go with these guys. I feel like both of them aren't really all that strong with their melee boost that they add, not really to the extent where they're more exciting than other more generic picks. Finally for the Space Wolves, I feel like they get all okay with melee foot troops, they get an extra AP strat in melee, and most of the sagas are handy enough if you can trigger them. Again though, like the Blood Angels, they do have more rivals here, particularly the unique foot troops like the Blood Claws and Grey Hunters. I feel like Blood Claws in particular are a bit more efficient of a unit. Overall though, to talk about how good they are within the Space Marine Codex, you probably need to weigh them up against the other options that you could take instead. As I've mentioned a few times, I do feel that Blade Guard are perhaps one of the main rivals for them. I feel like it perhaps was a little bit telling when the initial Space Marine Index came out, and quite a lot of people were underwhelmed that a lot of the unique characters could only join Assault Intercessors and not Blade Guard, just because actual damage buffs like lethal hits from Lieutenants or plus one to wound from Chaplains tend to go a lot further on Strength 5, AP 2 and Damage 2 attacks, as opposed to what the Assault Intercessors get. It just means that for character-laden Death Stars that want to go charging towards the enemy, Assault Intercessors often tend to lose out to these 3 wound and 4 plus invulnerable save chunky elite swordsmen. I think perhaps between them and Gravis damage dealers like the Aggressor Squad, they tend to be competing more for a small unit kind of role with the various different Space Marines that want to skirmish against enemy infantry and maybe do objective things of one sort or another. For choices in that niche, you also have the standard intercessors, maybe not so very different, but swapping out a bit of melee threat and AP for more range shooting with grenade launchers and AP-1 bolt guns. 
and they get the fairly handy to have sticky objectives type rule. Otherwise, for taking primary points, infiltrators are quite nice for deep strike denial. Incursors could do a similar sort of skirmishing thing while marking targets for other things to shoot. The Infernus Marines could be a similar sort of threat towards lighter infantry and also threaten some OK Overwatch as well. And scouts get forward deploy and a tanky stat line, potentially doing an objective holding job for a little bit cheaper, even if they don't bring quite as much raw threat or defence. Perhaps the single most obvious competitor though that came on the scene in recent times are the Jump Intercessors. These guys are 85 points per 5 and also act as a really quite nice skirmish unit. For just 5 points more I feel like they do have quite a lot of advantages. It's kind of rare that getting a jump pack and 12 inch movement and fly only costs you 1 point per model more than the standard issue version of that miniature. For the extra point invested you get a 12 inch movement which means they're often going to be charging rather than being charged. Quite a lot more reliable there. They get devastating wounds, impact hits on the charge, an extra plasma pistol per unit and also deep strike which could be good for doing secondary objectives if you wanted to. They don't have it all their way, they lose objective control too, the b-roll wound roll rules and the character and transport options are a bit more limited. Overall for raw value though I do feel like the jump assault intercessors do give them a run for their money with the overall offering. Despite their existence though, and all the rivals within Codex Space Marines, I definitely do see Assault Intercessors cropping up in competitive lists every so often, still just about managing to make their way into the highest level of play, though rarely in any sort of great numbers. The most common loadouts that I've seen tend to be just 5 man units with Power Fist and Plasma Pistol, often just a single unit in an overall Space Marine list, maybe two at a push, but I feel like after that, realistically you might be better off just going with some of the other myriad of various different support options, as they all offer their own thing. For those units, I think the standard battle plan would be to deploy them at least somewhat kind of safe on their deployment zone, move them towards midfield objectives, and have them as a good skirmishing threat, enough melee to be able to take out any lighter enemy infantry that try and take that point, but also being cheap, expendable, and at least somewhat tough for the cost, that it's maybe not the end of the world if they do get charged and killed by an enemy elite damage dealer, then hopefully that unit will be in a good place for you to hit back hard. Otherwise though, with the objective control too, they might just be able to steal a point for a turn, and given their damage profile, they're probably not going to be the single biggest threat priority for your opponent, not compared with other nasty things moving forward. Overall, they seem playable for 80 points, though I feel like they're probably not quite stand out within the army at this cost, and more competitive lists tend to not use them than do, though that's maybe understandable given just how many options the Space Marines have to offer. I would say as well that putting them on a home field objective isn't actually as bad as an idea as it sounds. Traditionally, you might think that you want ranged units to guard a home field point. If you put them there, then they could just focus on hiding, and actually having some serious combat threat could be kind of nice for deterring enemy units from just charging them incidentally, you might have enough threats to cut down some light infantry and not lose the point. There's still definitely good arguments for just having standard intercessors to contribute a bit at range though, or infiltrators to lock down the deployment zone with their deny deep strike rule. Overall between all that, I'd probably rate them as usable but not standout, though even the build around them for damage purposes I think maybe isn't as far behind as some people might suspect, with some sort of fighty character buffing their damage output, they still could add up to be something kind of scary if you can get them there. Let me know your thoughts on the unit in any case, have your Assault Intercessors been seeing table time in 10th edition or not so much? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the squad and how you're using them right now down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day, I'm sure I'll have plenty more on the Space Marines. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what comes next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.